Mythical creatures widely known today as dinosaurs ruled the Earth for 180 million years during the Mesozoic era. While a lot of studies have been conducted in regards to the species and ecology of dinosaurs, little is known on what happened in the world prior to the existence of the mythical creatures. Hello everyone! Today we'll be exploring the timeline of our mother nature Earth. Let's get started! Five hundred and thirty million years ago, during the Cambrian period, there were no signs of life on land, only invertebrates lived in the ocean. However, lives near water evolved at a rapid pace. The Anomalocaris is said to be the oldest and largest predatory anthropod existed on Earth. Anomalocaris fed on arthropods that eventually evolved into what we know today as insects and arachnids. These species fought endlessly to be at the top of the food chain. Hycoichthys is known as the oldest fish species, and it developed a primitive spine. It is the most primitive vertebrate, and is considered to be the ancestor of all vertebrates, including dinosaurs. By the Silurian period, 418 million years ago, Hycoichthys had evolved into Cephalospis, a 60 cm long jawless creature that fed mainly on algae. Arthropods also evolved throughout time. The fight for survival continued for over 100 million years. By this time, some creatures emerged to what may be reminiscent of creatures that can be found today. For instance, Orthoceras, a distant relative of cuttlefish, or sepia, or the giant scorpion, a one meter long creature with gills and stingers the size of light bulbs. At that time, these creatures were the main carnivores in the Silurian marine life. Their main prey was Cephalospis. The sea scorpion is the largest arthropod in history, with a body as huge as a crocodile over 3 meters long. The sea scorpions fed on giant scorpions. During that period, it was believed that the land may have been like lava and the atmosphere may have been poisonous to human beings. The earth then had significantly less oxygen and is believed that there was as much as 300 times more carbon dioxide. Still, even in such harsh environment, life existed. Cooksonia known as the oldest plant that existed on Earth, had its branches and leaves grow upwards so it can be exposed to as much sunlight as possible. As a result of this process, for the first time, forest emerged. For the first time in Earth's history, arthropods stepped onto the land. In addition to gills, they also had primitive lungs. We now move to 360 million years ago, the Devonian period. Evolution of life was still going on. Over the course of millions of years, Cephalospis evolved into Hynerpeton. The pharyngeal arch evolved into the jawbone and teeth. Essentially, they gained a tool that they can use to attack. Some fishes developed larger fin bones and muscles, which later evolved into primitive limbs. It is believed that this is how the sea creatures expanded their life onto the lands. Hynerpeton, which lived on land for over 300 million years, is one of the first creatures that ever existed and was 1.5 meters long. Creatures that fed on Hynerpeton also lived on land, but neither of their primitive lungs were capable to inhale enough oxygen for their large bodies to sustain life. As a result, throughout time, Hynerpeton solved the issue by evolving into a smaller body. It was only in the last 50 million years or so that plants evolved into trees and began to produce oxygen. The Hynerpeton had well-developed, complex lungs that was able to consume oxygen. However, even so, Hynerpeton spent most of its time underwater, even though it was more dangerous. For example, it had to face other dangerous species, such as primitive sharks and or Hynaria, a 5 meter long carnivorous fish that weighed up to 2 tons. During the Coal Age, roughly 300 million years ago, Hynerpeton evolved into Petrolocosaurus. Petrolocosaurus was able to lay eggs on land as its eggs were coated with a waterproof shell. This was the beginning of the first reptile species with a body length of approximately 40 centimeters. 300 million years ago, most of the Earth was covered with huge swamp like forests. In fact, these giant trees were distant relatives of ferns. At this point, oxygen accounted for more than one third of the air. This helped to accelerate evolution, 
leading to the development of new giant carnivorous arthropods. The reigning predator during this era was the spectacled crane, a dragonfly which was as big as an eagle. In addition, the rising water level created a favourable environment for Petrolochosaurus, which still inhabited underwater majority of the time. Another giant creature, Arthropleura, a relative of today's many-legged creatures, had a body as big as a car. As the water level rose in search of food, Arthropleura ventured into the dangerous territories where the Petrolochosaurus inhabited. 280 million years ago, at the beginning of the Permian period, the era of giant insects came to an end. The climate became drier and the oxygen concentration in the atmosphere gradually decreased. On the other hand, the reptiles multiplied in size. Their muscles and bones became thicker and their bodies evolved into all new different shapes and sizes. Which then led to the birth of the world's oldest giant reptile, Edaphosaurus. The Edaphosaurus flourished and spread throughout the entire planet, was 3 meters long, somewhere as big as a hippopotamus, and had a sail-like fin on its back which acted like a solar panel. In this era, the climate varied with the seasons, from scorching summer heat to freezing winter cold. In addition, a new plant species, the primitive coniferous tree, emerged. It was not only the Edaphosaurus that had sail-like fins on its back, but also its nemesis, the giant carnivore Dimetrodon, which was also about 3 meters long. By this time, these reptilian creatures were not only laying eggs, but also taking care of them for up to 7 months until the young hatched from the eggs. 250 million years ago, the Great Permian-Triassic extinction occurred. 30 million years later, reptiles became more like mammals, with a stronger vertebrae and muscles, larger heads, a mouth lined with large, sharp teeth. Dimetrodon then evolved into Gorgonops. At the end of the Permian era, all the continents on Earth collided, forming the supercontinent Pangaea. The majority of the desert was desolate, but a variety of mammalian and reptilian creatures continued to inhabit it. For example, the turtle's distant ancestor, the Scutosaurus. They were preyed upon by Gorgonops, which had developed sharp canines and had little trouble in penetrating the tough hide of the creatures. The climate was drastically changing, temperatures were rising and deserts were expanding rapidly. Reptiles flocked together near bodies of water, including a small reptile known as Dictodon, a distant relative of mammals, fought for survival. They survived by consuming small portions of plant materials and lived in a pair, digging spiral tunnels. The waters were inhabited by giant amphibians known as Labyrintha dontia. A global drought occurred and the deserts continued to expand destroying ecosystems over millions of years. This catastrophe was larger in scale than the one that drove the dinosaurs to extinction. Thus, the future was left in the hands of a small group of Dictodons, the only creature that survived the drought. By the beginning of the Triassic period, 248 million years ago, climate change occurred again. Dictodon evolved into Lystrosaurus, from which large and strong herbivores emerged. This was the beginning of the Triassic period, and the Earth gradually regained life. A certain area was covered with coniferous forests, inhabited by Lystrosaurus. After the Permian-Triassic extinction, Lystrosaurus became the largest animal living on land, but a new species, Eupercaria, emerged in the forest to become their arch-enemy. Their skeletons were suitable for bipedal walking, which was a clear advantage. This Eupercaria is known to be the ancestor of the mythical creatures we know today, dinosaurs. Even giant dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus and Diplodocus were a result of an evolution from these small, insectivorous reptiles. Lystrosaurus also had another enemy, the Therocephalia. Their glands were highly poisonous, that their bite was enough to kill their prey. The waters were home to Proterosuchus, known as the oldest ancestor of crocodiles and alligators. Eupercaria itself was not a carnivore, but its descendants later evolved into one of the most fearsome creatures ever existed on land. Then came the age of dinosaurs, where they ruled the world for 80 million years. So, how did the dinosaur develop and why did they become extinct? If you weren't paying attention, don't worry, we can repeat by re-exploring the timeline of Earth once again. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate you visiting our channel, please don't forget to subscribe. 
It's our pleasure to be able to share new and interesting information with you all. Until next time, see you.